everyone and welcome to Youth Action Net's first installment of our virtual learning sessions for 2017. My name is Whitney Turntine and I'm your facilitator today. I'm also the program coordinator for Youth Action Net and the session today is entitled Taking Charge of Your Story, Communications Planning Essentials. We have two great presenters today, Sheila Kincaid and Robert Lee. Sheila has more than 20 years of experience in nonprofit communications and has supported Youth Action Net fellows in framing and delivering their stories for more than a decade. Um, as a writer and filmmaker, Sheila is dedicated to telling positive stories of social change. Um, Robert Lee is a co-founder of Rescuing Leftover Cuisine. Um, and Rescuing Leftover Cuisine is an organization that addresses the dual problems of food waste and hunger in the United States. With headquarters in New York City, RLC currently operates in 12 cities. And over the past three years, the organization has rescued a million pounds of food with the help of over 6,000 volunteers. So, Sheila, um, maybe we can get started. And if you could tell me, um, why is having a communications plan so important for social entrepreneurs? Great. Thanks, Whitney, for the warm introduction. Uh, well, I've worked with a lot of youth-led social ventures over the years and a lot of um, older, more established social ventures. And my impression is that uh, more, most of their attention goes into activities like fundraising and delivering programs. And communications is often marginalized. And certainly communications planning is often put off to the side um, for another day. So I just want to make the point that communications planning is really integral to so much of what, what you need to do when it comes to fundraising, when it comes to uh, recruiting and retaining volunteers, when it comes to uh, being known within a larger marketplace and standing out. Uh, so it really does um, inform all of, all of your strategies and support those strategies. So secondly, um, by developing a plan, uh, you're really able to maximize your, your human and your financial resources. I know many of your organizations, you probably don't even have a communications, dedicated communications staff member. You're probably using a lot of volunteers, so having a plan is a way of really focusing their efforts and focusing the limited financial resources you have on communications. Another great reason to have a plan is to stimulate new ideas, so I really advise um, all of you watching this to, to develop a plan um, every year, if you're going to develop a plan every other year, to, to revisit every year. Uh, it's a great way to collect ideas from your various stakeholders, whether it's from your your board, your staff, um, volunteers. Uh, it's also a great way to be really clear about the audiences you're trying to reach and how you want to reach them. Uh, without a plan, you're more apt to think you can reach everybody at once, and, and by being more focused and strategic, again, you're using your, your resources more effectively. And lastly, having a plan is a great way to get everybody on the same page, all of your stakeholders on the same page in terms of telling your story, keeping people on the same script. As you'll see, we're going to focus a lot on messaging today, and it's a great way to make sure that, that there's continuity again in the, in the way that your story is being told. Right, thanks so much, Sheila. Um, Robert, I want to thank you, first of all, for agreeing to share your experiences through wrestling with the cuisine. And I wanted to uh, just tell us a little bit about why you were interested in learning more about communications planning. Sure. Um, so Rescuing Left of Cuisine has been around for only about two or three years. Um, and we've realized that uh, although we've grown uh, <clears throat> quite rapidly, um, you know, it, it's still uh, very difficult to kind of create that brand awareness um, across many of our um, food donors and volunteers. So uh, one of the reasons why we thought that was really important was because a lot of the food donors that reach out to us after hearing about us from CNN or from other uh, kind of media um, are usually uh, much stronger and more engaged donors um, than donors that we reach out to. Uh, and kind of convinced to come on board. So um, that communications um, kind of uh, uh, both internally and externally uh, and ensuring that uh, we have um, the uh, kind of brand awareness uh, and legitimacy uh, really helps to contribute to uh, more food donors, more engaged food donors, as well as volunteers who are uh, really into the mission. All right. Thanks so much, Robert. 
Um, Sheila, I'm going to toss it back to you. And I wanted to know what's really involved in creating a communications plan, perhaps step by step. Great. So we have mapped this out. This is our communications planning roadmap, and we can distill it into nine different steps. And I'll just quickly go through these. We're going to elaborate on each one of them in the course of this webinar. Um, where Robert and I began was really with a situational analysis and looking at what some of the strengths of their current uh, communications efforts have been, um, where they may have weaknesses, what are some of the opportunities that are out there that they haven't taken advantage of yet. Um, next, we move into the goal setting. You want to have between one and three really strong communications goals you want to achieve uh, throughout the year. Uh, those goals need to be backed up by objectives so that you can uh, narrow your focus and make sure that you're, you're achieving concrete um, uh, objectives. Uh, you're going to want to identify your audiences. Uh, you're going to want to clarify your messages. Next, we get into developing uh, concrete communication strategies and tactics. Uh, those need to be reinforced by a timeline so that you make sure that things get done uh, when you need them done. Uh, of course, you need to figure out if you've got the budget to cover all of your activities. And lastly, you want to make sure that you evaluate uh, on a period, periodic basis, uh, you know, what have you achieved, um, what do you have to, to revisit, um, so that measurement piece is really, really important. Um, so I might add that this, this process uh, can take anywhere between, I'd say, a week and maybe a month, depending on how many people you want to engage in it. Um, so a, a fairly simple plan where it's just you and one or two team members uh, might take a week, but if you want to engage your board, if you want to interview some of your stakeholders, even your donors, uh, to inform the process, that can take uh, easily up to a month. So I wanted to drill a little bit deeper into each step now. Um, so beginning with the, the situational analysis that we did, again, we, we did a basic SWOT analysis, and I have a communications planning template that I sent to Robert and everybody um, participating in the webinar, you'll have access to this at the end. Um, so it had various questions for him to answer. So we, uh, we, we did this basic SWOT analysis. And Robert, maybe you could walk us through what some of, some of the findings were of that initial research phase. Sure, yeah. Um, we found that it was really um, interesting to see that uh, we didn't really tap into any of our uh, food donor partners as a way to uh, communicate our success. Um, so one of the, the key things that uh, we realized were we, we did have uh, really great relationships with Starbucks, Panera Bread, um, and major brands like Katz's Deli, uh, Iconic in New York, and things like that. Um, and so, uh, you know, doing this basic analysis uh, really helped us determine that uh, we could leverage those. Um, and, and those were opportunities uh, for those companies to uh, kind of share those community engagements. So we actually worked with Chipotle, for example, last year, uh, and they just reached out to us to uh, kind of further develop that relationship um, and uh, communicate that going forward. Um, we also realized and were surprised about how much food waste um, was really a trending issue, uh, not just in terms of feeding the hungry, but also uh, in terms of reducing it on source and on, on location, um, and also um, you know, providing op opportunities to uh, reduce food waste from going to landfills by composting or uh, by providing it to uh, animal farms. So it, it really has become a pretty hot topic. Uh, it's a great position that uh, we find ourselves in to uh, leverage our you know, existing op uh, opportunities of food business partners that are willing to uh, kind of promote our relationship uh, and, and uh, you know, tell people about what they're doing with us. Um, we realized also, obviously, um, that uh, there you know, was a little bit of a uh, capacity issue of all the things we wanted to do uh, in terms of uh, communications. So specifically, we didn't have a person uh, that would do any of the communications. Um, so that's something that we'll uh, kind of uh, touch on later. But um, finding a person who can uh, you know, actually do the activities of the communications uh, was something that we realized we, we didn't have. Um, and um, given that uh, food waste um, is uh, usually kind of considered a cost of doing business, um, we realized that uh, although food waste is, is a trending issue, uh, people are, are, although now they're kind of changing their minds, it's still uh, considered in the industry as just something that is a byproduct of 
what they do on a daily basis um, and, um, you know, could be, uh, could continue to stay that case, uh, stay the way it is unless we do something about it and continue to communicate that that is not the case and we can do something about it that's cost effective, easy, and can save them time and money. Great. Um and I also want to mention that uh, Robert's organization for a relatively young organization had a huge media win a year ago. And maybe, Robert, you could talk a little bit about your CNN hero status and sort of what that did for the organization. Sure. Um, yeah, we, we were really fortunate um, to be highlighted as a CNN hero. Um, essentially, they, they uh, did a little bit of, um, uh, sure. Um, yeah, we, we were really fortunate um, to be hand. Uh, we were uh, kind of um, highlighted across um, a bunch of different countries. Uh, it was it was really key in expanding our branches. Um, we at that time I only had about one or two branches, and after the CNN Hero um, highlight, we received over um, hundreds and hundreds of applications to create branches. Uh, obviously, we didn't have the capacity to um, move forward with all of them, but we did end up with the twelve. Um, so we, we were very fortunate that uh, that happened. So this was a great boon to the organization, but it also, sure. I think, created challenges that you didn't have before. Um, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Great. So on to the next uh, step, uh, which was goal setting. Uh, so I think it's important when you're coming up with communications goals that you gr ground those in your larger organizational goals. So for those of you who have strategic plans, you're going to want to reference sort of your overarching goal in your plan. If that goal is, is you know, not written in stone, you're going to want to come up with a, a core theme that your organization is trying to achieve in the next year. And that is really uh, grounding your communications goals. Uh, so, Robert, I don't know if you want to walk through the, the three goals that you came up with. Sure. Um, uh, we are very focused on uh, working with more food business partners um, to donate their food. Um, you know, we, we've uh, been... Uh, uh, we tripled over the past year, and we're, we're trying to uh, maintain that growth um, rate. Uh, obviously, uh, probably will be less this year, but um, we want to continue to attract new partners, and um, communication is going to be a big part of that, especially as we uh, kind of hit a, um, uh, not a saturation, but at least a local saturation of uh, methods of kind of just cold calling and reaching out to people um, and, and kind of trying to convince them. Uh, communications will be key in having people find out about us um, and uh, you know ask us about what our services are instead. Our uh, other goal to maintain those food business partners that are donating their food uh, is to ensure that we have our committed volunteer base and that also grows um, you know in line with our expected growth of the food business partners. So recruitment of volunteers uh, is going to be a major goal for us as we uh, continue to grow. And lastly, uh, another kind of uh, thing that has been on, our, on the back burner uh, over the past two years is something that uh, we've been wanting to work on as we've noticed the growth in our volunteer base um, and the um, kind of uh, up uptick in the attention to food waste. But essentially, we've wanted to use our volunteers, our, our, our volunteer base to affect, um, you know, local uh, laws and, and policies to ensure that food donations are encouraged and food donation myths um, are uh, kind of uh, put away and uh, the facts come out on uh, whether or not food donations are illegal uh, and uh, what to that tax deductions that people can get and things like that. So uh, using the voices that we have can be a powerful tool to um, change those uh, mindsets. Great. So I was pleased that we had three pretty concrete goals here. It makes the whole process um, a lot easier. Um, so then the next step was to determine some objectives for each one of those goals. So this is just an example for goal number two, which again was maintaining RLC's volunteer base. Um, we came up with, with three pretty basic objectives. One was to continue its um, social media outreach um, at least once a day, to continue publishing 10 e-newsletters. Uh, then we were looking to double the Facebook followers to 10,000 and to increase the e-newsletter subscription uh, base, and then to uh, facilitate uh, quarterly uh, gatherings of the volunteers so that they could start um, getting to know one each other, building a community with one another yeah. to really um, 
make it really exciting and fun and, and a community-based experience being part of, exactly. our, part of our LC. Yeah, one of the things that we noticed was that a lot of our volunteers were operating in, in silos. They were signing up online using our web application, but they're not really meeting each other. Um, but there's, there's all this buzz around food waste and, and doing something about it and, and delivering this food. Um, but there was not as much um, kind of activity online or in person. So uh, these were the targets that we came up with so that we can start to really engage our, our followers um, and start to bring this community together. And I think it's important as you're thinking through objectives, you want them to be very specific, you want them to be measurable, and you want them to be achievable within the time frame of your plan. So next uh, came the step of identifying uh, the key audiences that RLC wanted to reach. And Robert, maybe you could elaborate a little bit on these. I think you've already referenced them a little bit. Yeah. Um, so when we were thinking about um, our, our goals, we wanted to make sure that uh, we uh, hit the audiences that we wanted to hit. And we took a look at our volunteer base um, and, and some of the demographics and realized that, that um, a lot of our volunteers, uh, not surprisingly, are millennials. Um, people our age group that are interested in helping out, doing something uh, really easy on the side. They can sign up online, familiar with the online platform and, and kind of intuitively how it works. Um, and um, we wanted to make sure that we could continue to engage more millennials um, and uh, bring them into uh, the volunteer base. Obviously, we were also interested in ensuring that food businesses uh, were, were listening to what we were saying. Um, and also, um, you know, over time, hopefully, uh, understanding that they could also get involved if they are, haven't already. Policymakers, uh, in, in, in line with our third goal, um, we wanted to make sure uh, we're also uh, had RLC on the radar to uh, listen to uh, what kind of ideas or thoughts or suggestions we had for our volunteers and our volunteer base had um, so that they can uh, kind of start to listen and hear what uh, people are interested in. Um, and obviously, uh, donors very important. Uh, one of our uh, biggest uh, sources of, of revenue come from individual donation uh, donors. Um, so, um, you know, food rescue, food waste, and hunger are very easy to rally around. Um, we want to make sure that uh, donors uh, are also um, uh, kind of keep it, uh, uh, taken into account when we did our uh, planning. Great. So I think the point I would emphasize here is it's important not to be trying to reach everybody all at once. So these audiences are fairly tailored. Uh, it's going to be easier to, to focus your efforts and to uh, measure your success at the end of the year. Right. So step five was really getting into clarifying key messages. And I, this step was made so much easier because, frankly, um, Robert and RLC have got wonderful messages um, already developed. And obviously, somebody's put a lot of time into this, but I found them very compelling and very succinct, which is what you want. So we had a, a matrix, and on the left-hand side, we had the audience group. Um, so for example, for the volunteers, we looked at what do they need to know? And the two basic questions, why should they volunteer, and what has been the impact of their efforts? Um, and so RLC had these wonderful messages already created, um, and a lot of really great data to include. So the first message point for the volunteers was that 40% of food produced in the U.S. is never eaten, while one in seven Americans is food insecure. I mean, I think that data just stands on its own and is, is quite surprising to most people. And then uh, in terms of its track record over three years, RLC has rescued a million pounds of food with the help of over 6,000 volunteers. Again, really, really impressive data uh, that speaks for itself. So in the actual plan, each audience group um, had key messages attached to it. Um, this is an area of communications planning where I, I put a lot of time and effort because these messages are going to show up on your website, in brochures, um, in your talking points when you give a speech. The message piece, I think, is, is just really important. So step, step six and seven, we, we combined. Um, so this was looking at what are the strategies uh, we're going to use to reach um, each of these audiences. So for example, for the volunteers, there's a heavy emphasis on social media outreach because that's where those folks are hanging out, uh, is online. Uh, so there was some specific activities under social media outreach, and that is an activity that's happening pretty much every day. Um, then the business and donor audience, 
uh, uh, was important. I think Robert, for the first time this year, is producing an annual report um, to sort of professionalize and, and uh, relate to that, that audience group uh, at a different level. Uh, and, and in order to have that annual report come out, of course, you're going to need to collect success stories and endorsements and photos and data and infographics. Those are all the pieces that go into producing a report like that. And another uh, key activity for the, for the business audience was an annual gala, which Robert hosted the, his first one, I think, last December. And uh, there's various activities that need to happen to, to achieve a really great event. And one of them might be to have a celebrity spokesperson and, of course, having some targeted media maybe leading up to the event to, to raise RLC's profile. So that's, again, just one small snapshot of what that strategy page in the plan looks like. Um, so you'll want to develop specific uh, strategies for each, each audience. And then, of course, um, as you're doing the plan, you don't have to wait till the end, but you're going to have to be thinking about your budget and what kind of resources you have available. And beyond just cash on hand, what can you leverage in terms of uh, volunteer support, um, Robert, maybe you could speak a little bit to the communication support you get to both from your board and from volunteers. Yeah. Um, so starting from our board top down, um, we uh, one of our goals actually for communications is to create a subcommittee on our board uh, that will center around communications and our communication strategy. Um, so that will be uh, obviously on a volunteer basis. Um, and so that can um, help alleviate some of the capacity issues. Um, we're also looking to um, uh, additionally hire a communications person um, as we uh, move forward because it's such a key uh, you know, uh, factor in our um, strategy going forward. And so we're going to be looking to uh, raise about 30K to hire a communications person uh, going forward, and that will be specifically for uh, you know, this, this, all the activities that we uh, were mentioning in the past um, uh, so that we can have the capacity to achieve these goals. Um, we will also be uh, working with our community outreach director to uh, essentially work with our partners and our food donors to help communicate um, our partnerships and um, increase our brand awareness. Great, and I think it's it's just really important to look at where you can leverage pro bono support. Um, Youth Action Net for a number of years had pro bono support from a, a major international PR firm. Uh, we've got national institutes in various countries that are linking uh, students in classes who are studying graphic design and communications with young social entrepreneurs. Um, students need the experience. They need to build their resumes. Sometimes that's a great source of, of free support. Uh, again, uh, your partners, some of them may have access to graphic design support. Some of them may have um, access to printing. Um, again, I think it's just great to, to be creative about how you, how you pay for your plan. So lastly, uh, we looked at a few key indicators in terms of how to measure uh, your communications plan success. And uh, we agreed that it's probably best to, to check this plan quarterly to see how it's doing and make revisions. I like to think of communications plans as living documents, so it's not something that is set in stone that you uh, um, put in a drawer, but you come back and you visit it and you update it uh, periodically. So in terms of the, the measurements we came up with, one of course would be social media likes, uh, activity on social media, uh, the amount of media coverage uh, generated, uh, how many people show up at events, both the, the annual fundraiser and at the, uh, the volunteer events, um, are people opening the e-newsletter, um, have new partners come on board. Uh, those are some of the, the metrics that we came up with. Okay. And, and honestly, as I listen to you guys chat a bit, I know this is a, a bit of a high-level discussion that you guys really drilled down a lot into this. But, Robert, if I can ask you, how, how are you feeling about all this? <laughs> this sounds yeah. great. But uh, are, you, are you feeling a bit overwhelmed? I mean, you got to get a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, um, it's uh, obviously the celebrity and those kind of things are uh, kind of lofty goals. I think it's right. um, uh, it, it, one of the things that we uh, have uh, always um, heard complaints about from both our volunteers and our supporters is that uh, we don't communicate enough and we don't, uh, people should know more about what we do mm -hmm. and what people should know. Um, and so, uh, you know, this, this uh, communications plan uh, is, is 
specifically to target that need and gap that we've been pretty much ignoring for the past two years, three years. Um, and, um, you know, I, I don't think it's uh, tremendously overwhelming, especially since it's broken down into very concrete and actionable um, steps and activities. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not uh, terribly overwhelming. Okay. I'm wondering also, um, you know, how is, how is what you guys went through with, with this process, how is it sort of reflected the departure of what you've done in the past in terms of a communications plan? Was there yeah. any sort of aha moments or big changes? <laughs> well, it was completely different because we never had a communication plan. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, so the whole process um, was, was very enlightening. Um, and Can you speak up just a little bit more for us? The whole process was uh, very enlightening. I think um, the, uh, the focus on uh, making communications a priority was mm -hmm. uh, key. Uh, and then this communications plan will make the implementation, um, you know, really solid. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad to, to hear that. That was a big concern for you. <laughs> <Just a little laughs> bit. But I'm excited that you're excited and you've got an actionable plan. Um, but I'm wondering um, a little bit if we could uh, move on to the next slide a bit here, Sheila. Um, before we go on to question and answer, I know you guys have a lot of those. But I wanted to first... We have a special thanks to our sponsors, American Express Foundation and Laureate International University, for their support of this virtual learning series. We're not finished yet, but I did want to highlight them. I also want to let those of you who I know your time is, is precious, if um, you wanted to follow the conversation elsewhere, you can also um, follow us online in the next slide. Um, and keep us um, on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And you can also subscribe to our monthly newsletter. Um, I did want to open up the floor, though, um, for some audience members. If you had any questions um, or anything you wanted to ask, you can feel free to ask that now. We will be sitting out an evaluation um, uh, very soon. And it, this evaluation also has the resources that Robert was given from Sheila. So you guys will have access to that. But that's once you, for, you actually um, finish our survey. It's really quick, painless, but uh, we want to get some feedback from you all as well. So if we can move on. Um, just wanted to open the floor for questions. You guys can feel free to unmute yourselves. If you have anything to ask Sheila and Robert, um, you can actually use that, the chat button or ask now. 